Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Ramos, and on this week's episode, I have with us one of my very special friends, Coach John Clary. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Megan. Thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, hanging in there with all of this craziness going around. How are things for you in Virginia? Uh, th things are fine here. You know, I'm trying to stay home as much as I can. And uh, since I do all my work from home, that's working out just fine for me. I realize there's a lot of people that are not in the same situation, so I really feel for them. That's a really crazy time. And you know, we have lots of people that have started to gain a little bit of weight because they've been at home, they're not used to being at home, or that they're still having to go and work and working longer hours, so stopping and grabbing those quick and easy foods on the way home or on their way to the office. And that can result in a few extra inches around our waistlines, as both you and I know. Well, everyone, so John is one of our fasting coaches over at The Fasting Method. I met John shortly after the release of The Obesity Code by Dr. Jason Fung, and this is going back several years when fasting was just starting to become very popular. John was a leader in a few fasting-related Facebook groups, and I found John to be so inspiring. He was always so supportive. There was never right way or wrong way to do anything. It was just the way that worked for you and what was getting results. And he was always so kind and welcoming and offering all of the knowledge and his experience through fasting to help reverse his own type 2 diabetes and lose weight. So I got to connect with John. I actually was going down to my husband's hometown of Orlando, Florida. And we were meeting up with a friend of ours from the Facebook community as well. And he lives in Daytona Beach. And he was chatting with John, letting John know that Angel and I were going to be there. And John drove down and joined us for dinner. It was really great to finally meet him in person. So John, why don't you tell us a little bit about your fasting journey? Because you really had to navigate this all on your own. There weren't programs like the fasting method available when you first started. Well, this is true. Uh, my exposure was when I found a copy of the obesity code. I was type 2 diabetic for 19 years. And my doctor told me the next thing uh, to happen was that he was going to have to put me on insulin. And I, I was really ignorant about um, my health. But I knew that that wasn't going to be a good thing. So um, I stumbled across the book. And I was so excited uh, to read the book and find out. I felt like vindicated in a way that it wasn't my fault, it was the hormones. Yeah. Um, not that I didn't have a hand in what, what happened to me, but I was working against my hormones and you know that's just not gonna work. So I was so excited I read the book in one day and I started <laughs> the next day. Yeah, I remember now it was, uh, I, I read the book on a Sunday and I said, I'm gonna start fasting on Monday. And um, on Monday morning, I decided I'm just gonna go with black coffee and uh, push through the hunger if it came or when it came and, and it came um, but, <laughs> but that's what got me started with fasting and I made some major changes in my food and within a few months my glucose normalized and in about a year I had a normal A1C which was just astounding to me that that was even possible. That's incredible, John. So John, you also lost an incredible amount of weight too. Do you mind sharing with everybody how many pounds or how many inches you've lost throughout sure. your journey? Well, you know, I always say that my motivation was to reverse my type two diabetes and the weight loss was a, a side benefit, but yeah, I lost 160 pounds. That's incredible. And how long did it take you to achieve that weight loss? Oh, that was, a, it was about two years, you know, it all came off pretty quick in the beginning and then it was a little, um, little harder. Um, I did some additional fasting, tightened up on my food. I still have some body fat I want to lose, but I enjoy just having a, a normal life and a, a normal relationship with food. So um, I'm pretty happy about that. That's awesome. So you found the obesity code. You realize that perhaps you had the wrong education about nutrition and type 2 diabetes, 
and you started changing things up and within a short period of time you got pretty dramatic results now john everyone is going to write in the comments what fasting protocols did john follow so you said you you had the beginning of your journey where you saw a lot of weight loss and you got great improvements with your blood sugar levels and then there was a more stubborn time where you had to change things up so do you mind telling our viewers today like what fasting you did at the start and what tweaks you had to make along the way to break through those plateaus and reach a uh, type 2 diabetes reversal diagnosis and 160 pound weight loss is pretty incredible. My, my main fasting tool was eating um, one or two meals a day and then I would do an extended fast about every three months. My very first extended fast was three days and I've done a number of seven day, five day, did one 10 day. I did the 10 day with you and Eve Mayer, um, <laughs> gosh, a little over a year ago, gosh, a year and a half ago now. Um, but, but, you know, to, for me, the extended fasting, it, it's enjoyable once I get it going, but for me, it's hard to psych myself up. Okay, you're going, you, you're setting this goal and you're not gonna eat for a week. Um, so I, I thought maybe it's time for me to try alternate day fasting. I thought, gosh, I don't know about that because I go through that 24 hour mark where you switch over to fat burning mode, you've emptied out your liver. Um, do I want to do that three times a week? But I, I did start the alternate day fasting and I found it really, after a week or two, it, I preferred it to the longer fast for sure. Because I could, for example, if my first alternate, alternate um, day of fasting was on a Monday, I'd have a nice satisfying meal on Sunday Whenever I would get hungry on Monday, I think you just have to wait till tomorrow. You can eat tomorrow. And that, that would get me through. I would have a, a drink of water, take some salt, whatever, um, distract myself. And then the next day, it was two meals. I was the same, same way. I did find fasting to be pretty daunting at the start. So knowing that I could eat the next day was nice. It provided me with some comfort. I always tell individuals when they're looking to do a longer fast, don't plan it. Just get into a fast and if it feels good, then let it go on for an extra few days or last for the week. Because like when you say, okay, I'm going to do a seven day fast or a 10 day fast or a three or five day fast, whatever the extended fast is for you. And you think about it, it can really sort of, you can psych yourself out and suddenly it can become pretty, pretty overwhelming. So I think that most people do really well on alternate daily fasting. And I know that when people eat lower carb too, they're not necessarily always refilling their liver with glycogen and then having to redump it. So, I mean, and obviously you didn't either because you got 160 pounds of weight loss over the span of a couple of years, which is roughly like 80 pounds a year. That's pretty significant weight loss, John. What would you say you drank on your fasting days? Because everybody's always curious about what someone has during a fast. When I'm fasting, I like my fast to be uh, pretty clean. Um, not that I have anything against fasting aids, I just haven't felt that I've needed them myself. So I, I take a lot of salt. I have a, a little container that my daughter made. A lot of people <laughs> see me showing that in, in focus groups. And I measure out, I learned this trick from you. I measured out a couple of teaspoons in the morning and I take pinches in the mouth uh, throughout the day. I drink plenty of water. I don't overdo it. I'll have uh, black coffee in the morning. A lot of times I'll have uh, unsweet tea, but that's, um, pretty much what, what I consume when I'm fasting. Sometimes it's some sparkling water. That's great. Yeah, the sparkling water can really calm down those tummy pangs and uh, hunger pangs. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much the same way. Salt is so important to me when I fast. I get bored of the ways that I consume it, like so many of our community members. So sometimes I put it on my tongue and drink water. Sometimes I drink it in water. Sometimes I have it in pickle juice. And when I first started fasting, I drank so much chicken broth that I thought I smelled like a chicken. <laughs> so I was happy when I didn't need it anymore. But your body lets you know. I don't drink coffee, personal choice, not um, per personal preference rather. I just don't like the taste of it. So it's not health reasons, but I do love herbal tea. Uh, so I'd say herbal tea, green tea, um, those things help me get through a fast for sure. But there's all different strategies for fasting and people ask us, John, I know we get overwhelmed with these questions. Um, you know, if you're taking something on your fasting day, like say you're adding a little bit of cream to your coffee, 
But if you're getting results and you're seeing improvements with your blood sugar levels and if the fasting is easy for you and you're not struggling, then there's no need to remove that cream from your coffee. But if you're adding that cream to the coffee, the fasting is painful. You just want to rip out your hair. Um, your blood sugar levels aren't improving. The inches aren't coming off. You're not feeling any wiggle room in your pants. Then it's best to try to cut out some of these fasting aids or training wheels, as we like to call them over at the fasting method. John is one of our, our fasting coaches. So John helps re-educate individuals about fasting and hormones and nutrition when they come into the program. He helps them implement fasting strategies and different nutrition strategies to get started on the road to achieving their health goals, and he helps them troubleshoot their fasting issues along the way. Don also leads some of our focus groups in the community on intermittent fasting and extended fasting. I know his Saturday group, extended fasting group, is very popular among certain community members. And John's really active in helping to engage with the clients in our community forum, always offering such great support. Um, so John is awesome. And you can learn more about John on our website, thefastingmethod.com, under coaching program. And John, before we wrap up today's episode, what would you say are your top three tips for someone who's just getting started with fasting? I think I would suggest skipping breakfast. Um, many, many people are not very hungry first thing in the morning. So th that's how I started. And I know that um, Dr. Fung has suggested that. Just skip breakfast and push off that first meal of the day. Um, have your coffee. If you, um, if you normally have cream in your coffee or coffee made or something like that, try and switch over to heavy whipping cream and limit yourself to one tablespoon. And I'll tell you, when, when I measured out one tablespoon, uh, I was like, that's it? I was using more like a cup. <laughs> so that's why I switched to black coffee. I, I, um, it took a couple of weeks to get used to that, but now I prefer it black. So try, try just skipping that one meal a day and pushing on through the waves of hunger until it's time for you to break your fast. Uh, the other thing I would suggest is to go through the house and uh, clean out your pantry, clean out your cupboards, clean out your refrigerator to the extent you can to get rid of the food that you don't want to eat anymore. This being mainly um, highly processed food, high carbohydrate food. And then finally, I would say stay hydrated. Get your salt. Get your water. Uh, you might need more salt than you think you do. Um, water, drink to thirst. You don't need to overdo it and drink two gallons a day. Um, and that, that would be what I would suggest. I'm sorry, my greyhound is crying. He doesn't <laughs> want to fast. He wants to eat. Um, so he's just whining at our conversation here. The joys of working at home during the well, pandemic. Probably seen, my, <laughs> probably seen my cats running around in the background here too. One of them's been at my ankles. <laughs> it adds personality <laughs> to the show. Well, John, I couldn't agree any more with those tips, you know, especially about breakfast. Most people just want to eat because it's drilled into our brains that we should eat breakfast. Um, but breakfast is really the any time of the day when we go to break our fast. And so I hear you on the salt thing. I, I think it's so critical for people to actually measure out their salt because it's really easy just to forget adding it in throughout the day. And when you look back and reflect on your day, you know, you added it here and you added it there and it, it's got to be a good amount of salt. But actually, when you measure it, you'd be surprised. And this is something that happened to me during my fasting journey. I love salt. I think salt's great. Everyone gave me so much grief about how much salt I had. And then finally, I had this doctor telling me to embrace salt. So I was super psyched about that. Um, but then I just wasn't adding enough. And I actually started to measure out how much I was adding. And I was surprised that even me, a true salt lover, a salt fanatic, um, wasn't adding as much salt as I needed to. And it can really make a difference. We found with women adding salt can actually help see an increase in how much body fat that they are burning. We can see this in a reflection of their measurements, the scale, or even some people check their blood 
ketone levels. It, tells, it helps give us an indication of how much body fat they're burning during a fast. So I think measuring out the salt is important. But always, before you start any fasting protocol, making any dietary change, such as adding salt to your diet, check with your doctor. There are individuals who are salt sensitive. Um, but a great book that we'd love to recommend at The Fasting Method is one written by our good friend, Dr. James Antonio, and it's called The Salt Fix. And we'll make sure to link that in the show notes below. Well, thank you, Coach John, for joining me today. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for myself or Coach John, make sure you comment below. If you want to see more videos like this in your YouTube feed, make sure to subscribe to our channel and to like this video. And we'll see you back here next week. Bye, everybody, and happy fasting.